Yakwe! I'm actually gonna go to France pretty soon to see my family, so I thought I'd make a short video before then talking about one of the funniest systems of phonemic transcription I've ever come across in a formal context. In 2000, American linguist Mark Hale published a paper in the Linguistic Review titled Marshallese Phonology, the Phonetics Phonology Interface, and Historical Linguistics, where he babbles about some optimality theory stuff I'll spare our brains from exploding about until later in the video, but importantly, where he includes a discussion about the Marshallese vowel system as an example of which he claims is quite striking and even rather startling, since they work pretty differently from vowels in most other languages. I'll get into how specifically, but it's for this reason that Hale chose to notate the four phonemic vowels in Marshallese with these four emojis. <laughs> a coffee cup for the high advanced tongue root vowel, a rotary telephone for the high retracted tongue root vowel, a yin-yang emoji for the lowered advanced tongue root vowel, and a soccer ball for the low retracted tongue root vowel. Wild. Basically, Marshallese vowels vary significantly based on the consonants around them, and in many cases do not feature a steady tongue position throughout the vowel. Hale gives the example of the word kyup, or I guess this, <laughs> which sees a progressive change in the backness of the vowel as it progresses, changing from a front vowel to a back one. This sort of progressive change in quality holds for all the other vowels marked here with a tie bar, including the mon of thongs, since those are analyzed as vowels that change from one position to the same position. Because of this, Hale claims, with reason enough, that representing Marshallese's phonemes with the international phonetic alphabet could be difficult and misleading. His argument is that a symbol like this, by definition, denotes a variety of features. E is a front, high, unrounded monophthong. However, the highest vowel in Marshallese is neither front nor back, nor round nor unround. So he says there's in fact no appropriate IPA symbol which may be used to represent it, which is why he opted for the underspecified arbitrary emoji symbols. He also started beefing with bracket notation, claiming there's a need in Marshallese to distinguish phonetics as the output of grammar and phonetics as the output of the body. What I interpret from this is that forward slashes are used for underlying phonemes like usual, bracket slashes are used the same way most linguists use bracket slashes, with the exception of still underspecifying the qualities of the Marshallese vowels, and then the symbols used to denote the actual phonetic realization of the phonemes are... little human bodies. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, there's a lot to unpack here, but it's pretty cool. So, like I briefly mentioned, the quality of Marshallese vowels depends on the neighboring consonants. For comparison, here's a modern analysis of the Marshallese vowels proposed by Heather Wilson in 2003. The shift from one vowel to another depends on the qualities of these consonants. And again, as Hale explains, the perception of some vowels to stay consistent in their location within the mouth is the result of an underlying transition still happening, though just one between two vowels of the same quality. He uses this sort of system to make a more philosophical and theoretical argument about optimality theory, which, very basically, because this is a really complicated concept, explains that languages have rules or constraints that influence how words and sentences are formed. For example, one constraint in a language might favor simplicity, so having words that can mean a lot of things, yet another one in the same language might favor clarity, so avoiding ambiguity. Basically, languages pick the most suitable forms based on a hierarchy of competing rules, and Hale claims that a lot of the work done about optimality theory lacks in rigor and coherence, which is a fair point given the amount of developments in the field occurring at the time that I won't get into in this video, but will provide links to in the description. Basically, I respect his innovation, but in my opinion, his system should only be used to make the argument he makes in his paper, nothing else. Although his emojis might be useful in this theoretical context, such transcriptions should not really be used to usefully notate the phonemes of a language. I don't think he's making this claim anyway, but I just wanted to give you my two cents. The thing is, any and all symbols in forward slashes are already ambiguous and abstract representations. The truth is, if I'm just given this symbol, by definition, I cannot pronounce this without knowing the context of the language and its position within a syllable. In French, for example, this phoneme is almost always a, like in femme, but in Arabic, it could be a, like in kleb, or a, like in hana, etc. It's possible to assume that this symbol implies certain features, but the reality is that it really doesn't. Without the context of a language, it is just as unspecified as Mark Hale's emojis, and it's for that reason that we have phonetic square brackets so we can transcribe the phonetic representation of a language's phonemes. 
But it's entirely possible that Hale's work is too advanced for my tiny caveman brain, since my understanding of optimality theory isn't really the best, but whatever. Another problem for us caveman brains is that he doesn't give any examples where the forward slash notation is different from bracket notation, so it's difficult to see the value in distinguishing them in the context of Marshallese, and even English, as with these examples. But yeah, then the rest of the paper goes into that heated optimality theory debate, talking about stuff like homo colitumens, and genes, and physiology, and Ockham's razor. I really hope to one day fully understand what he's talking about, because it might just be that this guy's on a whole other plane of existence. This is insane. But yeah, anyway, that's about it. I just wanted to show you guys this system since I thought it was really interesting when I first came across it in a problem when I participated in round two of NACLO, which is basically a linguistics olympiad. And yeah, I just wanted to talk about it. I also put some resources to learn Marshallese in the description down below so we can keep this awesome and unique language. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye.